Hello, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a super fun and easy foundation paper piece block. It is a free pattern that can be found in my free how to do foundation paper piecing ebook, which I will link below. But the ebook is super cool. It has total directions and photos on how to do foundation paper piecing if you are brand new to it. And it includes this free pattern that you can practice on and work, work with. I'm excited because this pattern is one of my favorites. I'm actually making a full quilt with it. So I will show you the blocks I have so far when we start the tutorial. And I just really want everybody to learn to do foundation paper piecing because trust me, when you start it, you will be hooked. It is so fun. It's so accurate. It's so intricate. I just love it. So I want everybody else to learn. So I'm glad you're here and doing this free pattern with me. But if you are new to FPP or new to my YouTube channel, I do have several tutorials and videos with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do foundation paper piecing, how to use directional fabric, tips for tiny foundation paper piecing, tons of things like that. So make sure to subscribe and like this video and let me know in the comments what you wanna see more of. I'm always looking for ideas and happy to make videos on whatever you guys want. So this is the block that we will be making. It is a simple granny square block. It comes together really quick and it finishes at 10 and a half inches. So if you wanna make it into a quilt, it will be quick. It's not gonna take you years and years to make. So this is it, it's super cute. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so before we begin the tutorial, I wanted to show you my workflow for these bigger FPP projects that I have. So since I said, I told you guys that I was making a quilt out of these blocks, I have gone ahead and pre-cut a bunch of the templates um, for each block and then just stack them like this and set them aside. And then that way the cutting's all done and I can worry about piecing it. So after I cut all of my templates out, I like to go and batch cut my fabric. So I have all of that ready and it runs really easy, really fast and smooth. So I wanted to also show you some examples of the blocks I've already made to give you some inspiration. So you can see I've done several different color combos and they're all so fun. And I've used low volumes as the background. I've also used solid, um, not solids, but um, colored low volumes as the background. So you can really do what you want and whatever you desire because they're gonna turn out beautifully and really, really fun. So these are the ones I have so far and they go quick. Each one measures 10 and a half unfinished. So you don't need tons to make a good size quilt. All right, so let's jump into the tutorial. So to start with any of my patterns, what you're gonna do is make sure you have the scale correct. That's the most important part because having the scale wrong will affect your final result. So I have this one inch test block. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my ruler on it. Perfect, it's exactly one inch. So if it's off at all, just go ahead and go back to your printer and redo the settings and you'll be good to go. As with all of my templates and patterns, I include directional arrows that you can use to know which templates to sew to which ones so you don't get them confused or mixed up. So um, that's very helpful in the end when all of your pieces are all pieced together. The other thing is I've included two separate templates in this free ebook. So this one you can see is the colored version. I also have also included a blank one without the colors and just the numbers and letters. So you can go in and color them and keep it straight however you want because sometimes it does get confusing when I have pink here, but actually I'm gonna be using this white fabric. So if that is confusing at all to you, print the blank ones out color it in with colored pencils or crayons, which fabrics, which colored fabrics go where, and it'll go super smooth for you. So now that we have this measured, we're gonna go ahead and cut out our templates just along the dotted line. Now that we have our templates all cut out, it's time to cut out our fabrics. So I've already cut mine out and laid them out in the order that I am going to be doing them in. Remember that your outermost fabric is going to need the most and then get smaller as you go in. The center square is only just one square. Now, I like to just cut mine in strips that are two and a half inches wide for this pattern. Um, and then I will show you at the sewing machine, I just cut them while I'm piecing it. But if you want to pre-cut them, just cut them into two and a half inch squares. Except for this one, you're gonna cut to be four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle. 
So go ahead and get your four cut out and line them up in your order and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so to set yourself up for success with FPP, I recommend just having everything ready at your station so you don't have to be getting up and down. I always recommend a seam roller instead of ironing because then you are getting up far less and this is super effective. Always have your fabric scissors, your templates and your fabrics. Make sure the first thing you do is set your stitch length down to 1.5. That'll make it easier to tear out the templates later on as it will perforate the lines. So let's start with our first section. Now you can see on each template, they are numbered and lettered A1, A2, A3. So you're always gonna start with A1. So you're gonna sew A1 and A2 together. Now for a full tutorial on how to paper piece, I do have YouTube videos that I will link below that will walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do it. But for this particular template, since they are, there are two of each except for the center one, I like to put the twos together and then have the separate one, the center one, sorry. And then I'm gonna do both of these at the same time so that I can keep them, just keep a nice flow going and I already have my fabrics out. So this light pink is gonna be my A1 and A3. So I'm going to cut my piece big enough for that. I just like to put it on top here, flip it over and then trim a piece and it doesn't need to be you know, a very nice line or anything. You can see that that's not a clean cut. But what you're gonna do is flip your template over, lay it right side down, lay your first fabric right side up, and you're gonna put it a quarter inch past the solid line between A1 and A2. And feel free to pin that in place or you can just hold it tight. Then I'm gonna get my second fabric and just cut this to size. Lay your second fabric right side down with your first fabric. Pin it or hold it tight, flip it over, and you are gonna sew on the solid line between A1 and A2. I like to backstitch at the front and at the end to keep it super secure. Once that's done, go ahead and open them up, finger press it, and then use your seam roller or iron to press that seam. Now what we're gonna do is I always use a light source. I like using a light board, but for the purpose of today's video and being quick, I'm gonna use my window. So then I can just see through the light source and cut it about a quarter inch past the line between A2 and A3. I'm gonna get my first fabric again, lay that right side down with that second fabric, hold it tight and flip it over and sew on that solid line. and then go ahead and finger press that open and then seam roll or iron. And that first section is done, easy peasy. I'm gonna set that aside and do the second section now the exact same way. Now we are gonna move on to our second row and our fourth row. And I'm gonna get out my third fabric, my first, second, and third fabric, which is this green one. And for each of these, you'll just need two and a half inch squares. So I am cutting those right here. Now let's do this first B1 together. So flip it over, B1 is going to be my pink fabric, B2 is my yellow flowers. Line those up and stitch. Open it up, finger press and seam roll. Trim a quarter inch away from that solid line. 
flip it face down, fabrics face up. Get my third fabric, put it right sides together with number two. So on the solid line. Open it up and roll and then repeat. Now onto our last section, B5. Trim, lay right sides together. And roll. Now we have that second section complete. I want to show you too. So this little flower fabric is a directional fabric and you can see I'm not being too fussy with which way it's laying because I think it adds to the charm of it all. But if you do want to make sure that it lays a specific direction, that is really easy with this pattern. And I have a full tutorial on how to use directional fabric and get it laying the way you want and I will link that below. It's a really fun one and it kind of opens up a lot of possibilities once you know how to use it the way you want. So we have this one done and now we're going to work on the other one. Okay, now that we have all five pieces totally pieced, let's go back to the cutting board and I'll show you the next step. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take each template, lay it down, paper side up, get your ruler and your rotary cutter and cut along the dotted line. Don't cut the paper, that will dull your blade. So just line it up and cut along that line. Go around every edge. and then repeat for all of the rest. Now that we have them all cut, we are going to sew them together. So as I mentioned earlier, there's the directional arrows to help you know which ones go together. So this one says A, so you're gonna put A on that side, B is on this side. Now you are going to put them right sides together with the fabrics. And then you will sew on the solid line right here. That is your quarter inch seam allowance. So just stitch on that line, back stitching at the front and the beginning, sorry, the beginning and the end. And then you are going, it says to sew C right here. So go ahead and get C and line it up and do the same thing for all the following rows. And there you have it. How cute is that one? I love how it turned out. So easy, quick, and really, really stunning. So. Once you give it a good iron, make it all nice and flat, you can go ahead and remove the papers just by tearing them out. And um, since your stitch lake was so low, they'll just tear right on out. So give it a good press and your block is finished. And you guys, that is it. How easy was that to make this really cute block? I love that it uses four fabrics so you can mix and match your favorites and it comes out cute every time. So like I said, if you haven't already, grabbed the free pattern below and let's make this together. Thanks for watching, bye.